Hello, my name is Bjorn Barron, and this is the Ed Listen Show. And today I'm going to be doing a teardown for Ed for the Acer Spin 11 Chromebook. Uh, in a teardown for Ed, I'm basically going to be reviewing this specifically for education and uh, what you might see for maintaining it. So we're actually going to even take apart the device. So first thing is a quick unboxing. Uh, I have used this before, but I tried to pack it up roughly how it was. Uh, when you're unboxing these, I found the first time I launched this, the f when you unbox them, times, you know, if you're just doing 20, boxing doesn't matter. If you're doing 500, 1,000, um, 10,000, unboxing becomes very time consuming. So as you see in here, uh, first thing it comes in a recyclable little two holders on the inside and a nice little bag which judging by here it looks like it might also be recyclable too so at least it's coming with all recyclable materials it does have some other papers which I'm going to immediately throw away this uh, on the side it comes with a brick type USB-C charger and hidden in the cardboard here is the stylus that comes with this. This is the EDU version, so I'm going to sneak out the stylus too. Uh, it's been a lot of fun actually having the stylus, I have to admit. It's been a nice Chromebook to have and to play with. So I'm going to take the box, I'm going to put it down here. Now all the EDU Chromebooks that are convertible uh, have some basic features that need to be in this. Uh, one of the first ones that are probably the coolest is an outward facing camera right here. So what you see on the tablet side can be taken pictures in here just like you would an iPad or an Android tablet. Um, you can kind of bring it up. It still has the webcam right here for webcasting. The other thing that you'll see is a similarity is that they all will come with USB-C. Uh, the Acer Spin has it on both sides. And they also come with a stylus and Gorilla Glass or a glass surface that you can write on. And it's actually been very accurate and really well. Um, and I might add another, um, and I might talk about that in another video. But I want to get to the teardown and how this will work in education. So first of all, the stylus. As cool as it is, uh, I'm looking to do a one-to-one -one with these. I think 90% of the students will lose the stylus right away. I mean, can you imagine how many are asking for a pencil every day, let alone a single stylus? So I'm trying to figure out ways. Uh, if you have ideas, put it in the comments of what to do. Uh, my first thought is maybe actually charge the students five dollars to have these uh, that way there's a real sense of ownership and a sense of don't want to lose it and if they want it they get it if not great so let's start the tear down here uh, first thing that happens a lot is you need to receipt the um, change the screen how do you change the screen well in this one it's a glass surface but you kind of go around through. There is no screws on the top. But I'm going to go through and I'm just going to go around and take my little pry tool, go in here and twist it open. I have done this before, but it doesn't mean it's going to work perfectly right now. Pops open, pops open. Pops open, probably should shut off the Chromebook specifically. Come on. Shut down. There you go. If I hit another button and open and close, it'll probably turn back on. So, there you go. It's out. Now, looking at this, and Maybe I will inject some photos into here. Uh, let me show you what this is looking like. So that was it. And if I want to take out 
the screen, it looks like I will need to pull this piece off right here. There's a little tiny piece uh, that I'm going to have to pull off. And I'm going to have to pull off uh, right here. So there are two things that I'm going to have to pull off to, to be able to get this to work. And it looks like it comes with the digitizer itself. I'm trying to pull this off. It doesn't want to separate from the actual glass. And I don't want to really pull on it in this video. I'm almost guessing that when we get replacement covers, it's going to be this whole front section right here. Um, that's going to include the touchscreen and the LCD all together. And like I said, there will be two places, one right here and right here that you have to come off. And this was just a snap on, snap off type of situation. So I'm going to bring that back on. Not really that hard to change. I'm assuming, not sure on the cost of it though. And snap back together. So that's how you're going to change the screen. Now the battery, receiving the battery, receiving the cable, or re changing the keyboard is another thing that we'll commonly see. So I'm going to kind of quickly go right here and I'm going to pull out all the screws. Now I want to think of make a note while I'm doing this is that at the very bottom of this you see two drainage holes with keyboards. Uh, this is actually pretty neat. So this means you can physically see if you dump liquid on the keyboard it will drain. It looks like it has an extra drainage holes right in the bottom. Uh, the only other vent openings in the bottom is the vents for the speakers, which are down-facing speakers. There are four thin pads that this will sit on. Um, if I'm going to attach an asset tag, I'm going to have a little bit of problems because the whole bottom of this is all matted, which looks good for feel, but if you're trying to stick a asset tag on this, um, it might not stick very well. So now you pull it apart. I believe this one actually, yep. So if I pull this apart, the bottom comes off. So I'm just kind of going around, pulling this off. Ah, I don't know if you can see it yet. Let me see that. I have an issue already where the battery is already popping up. So I'm opening this Oop, and helps to unscrew all the screws. So I'm popping this over. Okay, I got the bottom panel that came off. The battery is not mounted at all. It is able to flex and move. And there's two little tiny plastic pegs that kind of keep it where it needs to be. I have mixed emotions about that. Um, the first set of Acers, we had the 720s we got, had two mount points. And what would happen is one would break and then the battery would peel apart. So this setup actually has a free floating battery. No mount points, no pressure points, no, no places to pull it off. Uh, not bad. I have the ability to reset the reset it right here. If I lift it up, I can reseat the mouse quite easily. What I do see is going to be a pain um, a little bit harder is 
if I need to replace the keyboard, I'm going to have to pull the battery, the speakers, the left module, the right module, and everything together. Ugh. And you have to be very careful about that battery flopping in the wind when you're working on it. Um, I'm not going to go so far as to take off the motherboard. I have already looked on the side. What you'll see is that the RAM and the hard drive is all soldered in. Uh, the only real removable piece is the wireless card right here. Uh, and then you have one side of the USB and things, and two modules. So that's what it looks like on the inside. I would say that this is not a device I would want to work on too often. Uh, I think the screen's going to be quite expensive. I think the battery, it's either going to be a great design or a horrible design that it's not mounted at all <laughs> under, under there. And if I look, yeah, none of these mounting points fall into place with it. So it's just whatever plastic's on the base here and there. Okay. I uh, won't bore you with the time of me putting this back together, but thank you very much for listening. This is a uh, teardown for Ed, and you're watching the Ed Listen Show. Thank you.